So in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Foxeer F722 dual flight controller. And this is going to be the first in a series of F7 flight controllers I'm going to be taking a look at on the channel. Um, it, until recently a lot of the F7s have been kind of pricey and now they've come down in price. This is about $40 right now and I think that they're going to continue to decline in price. So I'm pretty sure that uh, as the time goes on the choice for flight controllers is going to be switching from F4 to F7. But we'll take a look at this real quick and we'll talk about that a little bit more as to why F7s would be better than an F4. And of course F3s are pretty much uh, going to be going away because of all of the new features that are only going to be coming out for F4s and F7s. Um, the biggest advantage I think of the F7 over the F4 is the craziness that have to, has to do with um, the inversions, SBUS inversion, uh, which which UARTs are inverted and which ones aren't, and all that stuff. All that nonsense is gone. Is pretty much gone away. You're, it's gone back to, I think, where the inversion is built into the board, like on the F3s. So basically, they've got that feature back now on the F7s. Plus, the F7s are a little bit faster in terms of clock speed, so uh, you're going to be able to uh, rev up the clock a little bit more and... Uh, also, uh, with a lot of the F7s, you're going to have a dual gyro, which is what this has. This has the uh, MPU 6000 gyro here, and also the ICM, I think it's the 2602 gyro, and I honestly don't know, there's a whole bunch of different ICM gyros that are 32K uh, capable, but uh, I'm not really sure which ones are the good ones and the bad ones. I know that some are more prone to noise than others. Uh, but as you can see here, both the gyros are Howard mounted to the board here, standard 30 by 30 board. They all come with the you know, these M4 holes here, but it does come with these little rubber mounting grommets for vibration dampening, and these are absolutely important to have, especially if you're going to be running the 32K gyro instead of the 8K gyro. Uh, obviously, um, uh, you're going to be able to switch between the two gyros, and actually, I think there's a command... I think it's called uh, gyro to use in the CLI. That's how you can switch. It comes defaulted to the MPU 6000 gyro for 8K, but if you want to uh, go to 32K, you just have to go into CLI and type in the command uh, set gyro to use equals second. The yeah, first one is MPU 6000, the second one is the ICM 2602. And I'm not sure what happens if you use both. Um, that's something that I haven't seen too much documentation on as to what happens when both are being used at the same time. Not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, so I would probably stick to using one or the other. Uh, AK AK on the MPU 6000. Uh, if you have maybe a noisier setup, um, something that's going to crash a lot. If you have something that's more clean and you want to go 32 kilohertz on the um, gyro loop and the PID loop, I would try the uh, switching the gyro to the ICM uh, 2602. I'm not 100 sure if this is going to be able to do 32 32. I did try putting that in. CLI and the CPU went to 100%. Um, there's probably some other things you need to do in terms of maybe using multi-shot instead of uh, D-Shot 1200. I don't think D-Shot 1200 will work on 32K. I think it well, will, will work, but I don't think you can get the full 32K. 32K on both the gyro and the PID loop when you're using D-Shot 1200. I think you need something like ProShot 1000, something like that. Obviously, these are this is new tech that's coming out now. Um, if you want to go 32K, 32K, but I think if you got like a... Uh, BL, BL 32 ESC, like a 4-in-1 ESC, I think if you do D-Shot 1200, you could probably do like 32K on the, uh, the gyro loop and 8 and 16K on the PID loop, I believe. I think that's the maximum. And even though I think you're getting like 65% CPU utilization, so it is pretty, uh, it's going to be pretty taxing on the uh, processor to get those really high uh, gyro and PID loop rates. So anyway, in addition to uh, being able to uh, do inverted uh, on inversion on the UARTs, for example, without any uh, fuss and have to worry about what goes where, it does come with five UARTs on the board, and uh, that's all outlined in the little silk screening here. I'll go over all this here in a second. On the other side, there's not a lot of silk screening. There's just these pads here. You have uh, ground, VCC, current sensor, and your motor outputs for one, two, three, four. These seven pins that you can use to solder on if you don't want to use the seven pin micro connector here. And this doesn't come with a micro connector uh, in the package, so it's kind of relying on uh, the uh, probably the wiring loom that's going to come with your 4 in 1 ESC. 
So your 490C is going to have to have this output, this 7-pin connector with these pins output like this, or if it doesn't have that, then you're going to have to solder on the wires here. Obviously do some cutting and soldering to use these solder pads. Nothing else on the other side here is labeled, so everything on, uh, in terms of uh, wiring up is going to be on the top of the flight controller. So yeah, I'm assuming this is the top, and have the USB at the left, and that's the arrow pointing forward. And yeah, so everything that you're going to be soldering on, other than those on the bottom there for this connector, if you don't want to use that, is going to be shown here on top. So there's a nice wiring diagram that shows all these things. It's uh, depicted in the product page, and I'll go ahead and I'll just uh, pop that up on the screen right now. I'll go ahead and I'll show you all the connections here on the board itself. Start over here on uh, just below the uh, micro connector here. You have your CCS camera control. Uh, you have your camera connection here. And then this one here is for your power for the camera and your ground. And this CC for camera control is native for Foxer cameras. So if you want to be able to use um, your transmitter to change your settings on your FPV camera, if it's a Foxer camera, this will work without any sort of adjustments. If you want to use other uh, brands like Runcam, Caddis, I, I believe they'll work if you um, make adjustments to the settings in the CLI, but I don't know the exact ones that you have to, to use for those. So I know people are going to ask me, I sorry, I don't know. I think it's possible, but I'm not 100% sure what changes need to be made for those, but I do know that works 100% on the Foxier cameras. Obviously the camera connection here is for the video coming from the camera going in here, that's video in. And then over here you see a little solder pad bridge here for 5 volts or 9 volts. And it looks like uh, it's defaulted 5 volts here for this output here on the power and ground to the camera. If you want to get 9 volts to the camera you just uh, debridge this 5 volt and bridge the 9 volts. And then over here you have a, another 5 volt, 9 volt bridge for the VTX. So you have your ground, your power, and your VTX. And the, the VTX here is uh, defaulted to 9 volts instead of 5 volts. And then of course you have all of your UARTs and uh, you know, receiver connections here. You have your SCLSD for compass, for example. So everything is nice legal here. You have RX5, TX5 here, RX4 and RSSI in, TX1 and RC. That's going to be um, RX1 for your receiver. So this is probably, if you're using SBUS, you probably want to connect it up here. And then you have your 3.3 volts and 5 volts. So if you have a DSM receiver, you're going to use 3.3 volts here for one of those Spectrum satellites. Two grounds. You have RX3, SDA, TX3, SCL, 5 volts and ground for these pads here. So everything's very clearly labeled. No, there should be no mystery as to what's what. You have your LED pads here, 5 volts, ground, buzzer pads, B plus, B minus. Then you have S6 and S5. That's for motor up. It's 5 and 6 if you happen to have a hexacopter. And then you have TX2, RX2 for UR2, and 5 volts on ground over here. And then you have some additional small solder pads over here. You have a few additional solder pads here, CLK minus DIO and 3.3 volts. I'm not sure what those are. I don't think that's actually documented anywhere. And then, of course, right over here you have your boot button for going into DFU mode and, of course, your USB port. Anyways, that's going to do it for this uh, overview of the Foxier F722 dual flight controller. If you're here for the giveaway, um, pretty simple. And then this one, you just have to leave a comment below with the hashtag that I'm going to put up on the screen here. And uh, then I'll, I'll pick a winner in about two weeks. Um, and Foxier will uh, send you that one directly. Um, when I do the winner announcement, uh, when, I, when I select the winner, be sure you have your notifications turned on. Because if you miss that video and don't respond and claim your prize within 48 hours, I will uh, pick someone else to win that prize. So be aware of that. Uh, I'm not exactly 100% sure when that video is going to come out, but probably sometime in about two weeks after this video has been posted, I'll pick a winner. And then you'll have to respond within 48 hours to claim your prize. And then we'll have Fox here ship you one of these flight controllers. Anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think of the uh, F7 flight controllers that are going to be coming out. I'm going to have a few more that are going to be showing up on the channel soon. Got one from uh, Dal RC and I've got another one from Hollybro. Uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think of the F7s. I think that they're going to be useful, not useful. You're going to think that you're going to be using them, probably buying them in the future, or you're going to be sticking with the F4s. Just curious to see what you guys think. I know the prices on these are going to continue to fall, so yeah, I think these are going to be the choice.
going forward, especially into 2019. Anyway, guys, I hope you find the video helpful, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.